Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you every Friday morning. You make my Friday and you make my Shabbat. We are at the brink of a, what seems to be a war. A war not only at one front, but at many, many fronts. Where are we going with this? Why is this happening? What, most importantly, what can we do to actually transform this situation into something which is going to be a victory for Am Israel, for the Jewish people, and in turn a victory for the whole world? To understand the current events, we have to go back to the beginning of creation. At the beginning of creation, when Adam and Hava ate from the tree of knowledge, at this moment, there was a tremendous change, transformation that happened in the world. A darkness instilled itself in the world. Not only was there good and bad, there was good and bad at the beginning of creation. But the good and bad could be identified as two, as two separate entities. The moment that Adam and Chava ate from the tree of knowledge, there was a mix between good and bad. Now there's no good that doesn't have bad, and there's no bad that doesn't have good. Everything is mixed up together. And therefore, as we stand in this time, the purpose of man in these, this day and age is to actually transform the bad into good or extract the bad from the good in order that the world should be what's called a clarified world. But at the moment this happened, it started with man himself. Inside man, there is a confusion. There's that confusion of the bad and the good mixing in together. If you remember at the beginning, Adam and Chava did not feel their nakedness. They didn't feel because their skin was translucent. The soul was just expressing itself in its purest state and there was absolutely no blockage and no sense of self. The moment there's a sense of self, there is what we call klipa. There is a peel that covers, which this klipa is called now or, or, which is the skin. The skin is something which is opaque. It is what we call mishcha de chivya, which is the skin of the snake. It covers the soul and it does not permit the soul to express itself in its fullest power. And the confusion starts from within man. But as man ate from the tree of knowledge, it's not only man that came into that level of confusion, the whole world came into what's called a complete confusion and chaos. Now, till the end of time, our purpose is going to be to bring us back to a state where everything, all that has fallen in this darkness, is finally elevated to its source. And this is the topic of today. What is the source of evil? We know what the source of good is. The source of good is God, with two O's. But what is the source of evil? Does evil have another source? Or does evil come from God as well? So our sages teach us, en ra yored milmala. There's no evil that comes from heaven. So how is that possible? So where does evil come from? In order to understand this, we have to understand what happened at the beginning of creation before God created the world. Our sages in Kabbalah explain that there were two dimensions, two steps in creation. In Bereshit, in Genesis, it says, Ve'aretz ha'ita tohu vavohu. There was darkness, there was tohu bohu, which is a total sense of chaos, 
and the Spirit of God, which is going to be translated as, as the Spirit of Mashiach, is hovering over the waters. So at that state, what does chaos mean? After the chaos comes what we call tikkun, the world of order. What is the difference between chaos and order? According to Kabbalah, chaos means, olam means, orot merubim kelim muatim. Many, many lights, a lot of light, an abundance of light, but it's an overwhelming light. And therefore, the vessels are either too small to receive or they're too little in number to be able to absorb this light. As a result, there is what we call in Kabbalah, Shvirat Kelim, a complete blow up of the 10 vessels that were supposed to be the channels to actually channel God's light in and bring about the creation of the world. So God saw that it's not possible to create a world with chaos, with this tremendous, tremendous light. God has to diminish his light, not himself, but his light. Again, not his essence, but his light. And as a result, this light is going to be diminished and diminished till there can be what's called hit kalelut. Hit kalelut in Hebrew means inter-inclusion. For those of you who did not sleep in your math classes like I did when I was a kid, it kalelut means, if you remember, you have one circle and you have another circle. The two circles are independent. Once you bring them together, there is a common area between both circles. That's called interinclusion. That's called it kalelut. In the world of tohu, in the world of chaos, the power of kindness is so mighty, so strong, that it does not give the opportunity, it does not give a chance for anyone else or anything else or any other type of character, feeling, power to exist. When chesed exists, when kindness exists, nothing else exists but it's an overwhelming kindness, a suffocating kindness. When severity exists, there's no place for kindness to exist. That's the world of chaos. So you can understand that spiritually speaking, it's very, very, very potent. It's very powerful. It's very mighty, but it's impossible to live with. Some people are married to people like that. Some people have mother-in-laws, which are like that. Some people have bosses and bullies, which are like that. A bully is the perfect example of somebody which is tohu. It's my way or the highway, and I'm going to crush everything in my way. It's egotistical, it's self-centered, and it spreads and spreads and spreads till nobody else can exist. That's not the world of tikkun. That's not the world of a repaired world, a healed world. That's a broken world. A powerful world, but a broken world. That's tohu. And that's why when we see the discussion, the encounter between two brothers, Yaakov on one hand and Esav on the other, Yaakov when his brother says, no, you know, I have Yeshli Rav, I have a lot. Yaakov says, Yeshli Kol, I have it all. What does that mean? What is the difference in their way of expressing themselves? And we know that Esav hates Yaakov. He wants to kill him. So what happens? What is he saying? Yaakov says, I'm from Olam Atikun. I'm from the world of repair, a world which is healed, a world which is complete, a world which is wholesome, a world of inter-inclusion. I have it all. Whatever I have, 
That's my whole reality. I'm not looking for a reality outside of me to support my person, to support me intellectually, emotionally, and spirit. I am satisfied. I'm not satisfied. I'm happy with who I am and what I am at this time. Doesn't mean that I'm satisfied and I cannot grow. I can grow. But now, right now, all of what I have is my reality. Esav, on the other hand, which comes from the world of chaos, that's not what he says. Esav says, Yeshli Rav, I have a lot and I need more. Basically, I'm in a situation that whatever I can grab my hands on, I will have. It's the epitome, as we said before, of self-centeredness. It's called in Hasidut and Kabbalah, klipa. Klipa, klipa means a peel, a husk, something that covers holiness. And therefore, the difference between both is that by Yaakov, Olam Atikun, the world of repair, everything can unite together. Even if you're different, you can actually unite. You don't feel threatened by somebody else. You are actually able to blend yourself. On the other hand, klipa, what covers, what, what covers and hides the peel that hides the fruit, right? It cannot connect with others. It has to stand alone. It has to stand above. It has to stand and take more. And the more it has, the more ego it has. I was thinking this morning when I thought about this, it's just like a fruit salad. A fruit salad, you have many types of fruits. You have oranges, pears, apples, and, and so on and so forth. And, and if you take the peel off and you mix them together, they form one salad. But imagine if you don't take the peel off the oranges and you have small pieces of oranges. They all stand by themselves. They can't really mix. The klipa, just like at the time of Adam Arishon, the moment they ate from the tree of knowledge. At that moment, the bad became integrated in them. They start feeling themselves. The tikkun, the repair that we have, is to be like Yaakov. Yaakov is small. But when we speak about the 70 souls, the 70 bodies that form the household of Yaakov coming down to Egypt, it says Yaakov, and it's called Nefesh, Shivim Nefesh, 70 man, one unit. When it talks about Esav and his six offsprings, we talk about six different people because he cannot unite. And that's what the Zohar Kadosh teaches us. Man de Uzair, ihu rav. The person who is small is the person who is great. The person who is great is the person who is small. Continues the Zohar and says that a person that makes himself great, Hashem will lower him. And a person that makes himself small, Hashem will elevate him to greater heights. So, what is the end of the story with Yaakov and Esav? There's a mind-boggling situation of Yitzchak, a holy tzaddik, somebody that was ready to sacrifice himself on the altar and die for the sake of God. He sees his son Esav, he is blind. He sees Esav, he says, Esav, go, get me whatever he told him. I will bless you. Rivka, the mother, understands that there's a problem here. You don't know who really Esav is. Let me dress up Yaakov with the garments of Esav and let him get the blessing. How could Yitzchak be fooled by Esav? The answer to this is found in the fact that Esav came from Tohu. He came from chaos. You understand that chesed, kindness, severity, all this tremendous power at its source is tremendous. Imagine that nuclear spiritual power 
that would be transformed for the good, what it could do in the world. You have a classroom, and you have a troublemaker, a bully, and the whole classroom is terrified, and nobody can enjoy their life, their tranquility. Everybody's trying to suck up to him. And he is the troublemaker. You take him and you make him the leader of the class. You elevate him. Imagine what type of class you're going to have. The whole class is going to be elevated. Yitzhak Avinu sees Esav, but he doesn't look at the Esav the way he translates. He translates itself in this world as an evil, self-centered beast. He sees the toe, the tremendous, potent light which is inside him. And therefore, that's what he wants to bless. That's why originally Leah should have gotten married to Esau because a woman has the power to extract the good and transform a man. For the good, or God forbid, the worse. At the end of their life, when Yaakov will be buried, what happens? When Yaakov will be buried, the head of Esav will roll in and be buried with Yaakov, not his body. Why? Because in the head of Esav, you have all of that tremendous, tremendous power. So you can understand that when you have such power coming in the reality of a world which is somewhat limited to receiving a certain amount of light only, that power cannot be good. It's only going to translate itself into evil. So what is the source of evil? The source of evil is tohu, is the source of chaos. The level of tremendous, tremendous, tremendous light, but that cannot be contained in this world. Now, we know that in this week's parasha, there's a war going on. Everything is by divine providence. It says in Yiddish, we say, midaf leben midem tzayt. You have to live with your times. Living with your times, says the Alter Rebbe, means that you have to live with the parashat ha You have to live with the weekly portion. What happens in this weekly portion? Something extraordinary. There's so many events which are happening at the same time. As we have the threat from Iran coming, the threat, threat from Lebanon, the threat from Yemen and at the same time, the enemy Hamas at two fronts, you understand that all of these powers, what are they? Why do they hate us so much? Midian, in this week's Torah portion, they're the ones that after Bil'am wanted to curse the Jewish people and God put blessings in his mouth, they're the ones that sent their daughters to seduce the princes of Israel and the Jewish people and get them to serve idols. Eventually, there's going to be a war. This war is the war that's going to be the, what precedes the coming into the land of Israel. It's going to be Nikmat Hashem Bemidyan. The revenge of God to Midian. The Rebbe Rashab explains that the word Midian comes from the word Madon. Madon, which is causing strife, causing trouble, causing fights. It's Midian is the name of a negative force, which is the force that animates baseless hatred. That's Midian. I hate the Jewish people. Why? Because. Because what? Because they're Jewish. That's all that bothers me. 
my ego, I come from Tohu. I come from a level where I translated all that spiritual power into material assets, nuclear assets, God forbid, oil, riches, everything in abundance. And therefore, yes, Lirav. And I cannot stand that the little small Israel compared to all the Arab countries that surround them, on which the Zohar says, Man de Uzair, Iurav, the one that is small and makes himself small, he is the great one, and the one that makes himself big, I will lower them and bring them back to their position. The last fight before we're able to enter the land of Israel is to completely dismantle this baseless hatred. How do we do that? How do we dismantle an enemy that wants your death for no reason? The way to do that is to actually awaken in us a love for our fellow and a love for God. You see, there's a verse that says, Ketz sam la choshech, umacha Hashem elokim dim'ame al kol panim. God will put an end to darkness and he will erase the tears from all faces. On this day, bilaha mavet la netzach, God will abolish death. When we ate from that tree of knowledge, that tree of knowledge, and the spirit of, of impurity will be taken away from the earth. When we ate from that tree of knowledge, we brought bad inside of us. That bad cannot live eternally. So God said, you will not eat from the tree of life. You were supposed to live eternally. But because you ate from the tree of knowledge, I will therefore have to have you die. Why? Because the evil that's inside of you, which it should last only for a certain time, should die as you die. When a person dies, the evil that he's connected to, that he absorbed with eating the tree of knowledge, dies with him. There's a time where Hashem will completely take death away. He will take impurity away from the world. But... What do we need to do to be able to take all impurity and all death away from the world? At the time of Shlomo Amelech, there was a great revelation at the time of the first temple. Even the queen of Ethiopia came to, to listen to the wisdom of King Solomon. People from the whole world came to listen to King Solomon and to give offerings in the temple. But the light was not a complete light. It was not a light which is overwhelming from Hashem, a light that penetrates and permeates everything, a light of Kedusha that permeates every corner. It gave place for the existence of something which is the opposite of Hashem. It gives place for ego to exist. When Mashiach comes, there's going to be a light which is so powerful that that light will permeate every being and every being will be transformed to be able to absorb and recognize the light. You see, there's two types of lights. There's the light of what we call ratzon, will, and there's the light of emunah, faith, which is called emet. Both these lights, will, will is something that is able to affect the mind, that's able to affect the person. A person's will can change his mind and change his actions. But it's forceful. Even if the mind doesn't understand, a person has a will, the mind has to follow. Emet, emuna, faith, and emuna, and, 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 and emet, the truth. Truth as well is something that permeates and forces a person in a certain direction and to think a certain way. But it's not forceful in the ways that it co coerces the person, but rather convinces the person. The person absorbs the light of truth and now becomes one with that truth. The level of light that's going to shine when Mashiach comes is going to be a level of light 
which is compared to truth. It's going to permeate the world in such a way that the truth will be so obvious that all negativity will not be able to stand up in front of the truth. Today, what we're seeing in the world, the most despicable, disgusting lowliness that we see during the Olympics, in the way things are exposed, in the agenda that's being pushed on the world, in the way we see how organizations which are supposed to protect are actually biased and they're part of the whole terror of the world. It's all about ego and self. There's a certain amount that ego and self can grow till eventually everything explodes. And then you will see the truth of Hashem. The war, the Bezat Hashem, we won't have to go through a war. But the fact that now the axis of evil, which is Iran, is the one declaring war. The one that was embarrassed, the same Iran that was embarrassed after sending over 331 ballistic missiles and was made fun of by everyone. You're going to see how slowly but surely all of these great powers will completely be subdued before Hashem. In this time, because us, Am Israel, we have the power of unity, we have the power of inter-inclusion, of itkalelut, of tikkun, we have the power to overcome the separation we have between ourselves. Even though our bodies might seem to be separate, at the level of the soul, we are one unit. And therefore, our thoughts, our sages teach us, where the thought of a person is, that's where he can be found. And therefore, if we put our thoughts in a way of bitachon, of self-confidence, of surrender to Hashem, of complete faith in God, of joy of the upcoming great victory, not only of Am Yisrael, but of God Himself, of truth over lies, of light over darkness. And that whole transformation, as we unite ourselves in our heart with our people, this is going to be the tool that is going to completely dismantle all evil. And we'll be able to say, Yesh li kol, I have it all. And therefore, the Rav, the people that think that they're great, will actually completely dissipate. It's interesting, I just saw this morning a young lady that was one of the hostages. And she said something that's very, very beautiful and encouraging. And I'll leave you with this. She said that the terrorist that was keeping her hostage showed her on the TV a bunch of Jews, liberal, orthodox, leftist, rightist, whatever you, all the denominations and all the names that people like to call themselves. Bring them home. Bring them home. We want to see our hostages, our brothers and sisters back. She said it warmed her heart. But what warmed her heart even more are the words of this terrorist. He said, ah, you see, when they're united, you can't do anything against them. Even the terrorist, the axis of evil, the tohu, the chaos, that power, when it comes and translates itself into evil, in front of the unity of Am Yisrael, when we are united, it's not that one plus one makes two. One plus one makes three. The unity of all of us brings about atzmutu ma'ut and sov, the essence of Hashem. And before the essence of God, nothing can stand. So let's be strong. Let's speak words of positivity. Let's think positive. Let's be positive. Let's act positive. Let's influence another person to connect to his true self, to his true soul, to his true identity by us being present 
and being happy and being happy with everything that God gave us. This is a strength that will give strength to the whole Am Yisrael wherever people are and especially to our soldiers. Bezrat Hashem Yidbarach, may we see the Geula Shlema right now with Mashiach. This is definitely a step closer to bring this light, the light of darkness, and transforming into the ultimate light. I'm going to conclude with a prayer for our soldiers. Mishabirach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov Uyevarech Hayale Tzva Gana Le'Yisrael Uyevarech Et Hayale Vagana le Israel, Uye Varech Hayale Vagana le Israel. Much good news, Shabbat Shalom. This Shabbat we bless the month of Av. It is the month which will become the head of all months. The father of all months. It's a month in which we'll have a complete transformation. Mishenichnas av mematim. How besimcha? When we come into the month of av, we diminish. We don't diminish in joy. We diminish all negative things with joy. And bezrat Hashem, as we bless the new month, the month of av, we will have the Geulah Shlema and see the Bet Hamikdash rebuilt together. Shabbat shalom to all. God bless you. Thank you, Rav. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. It was amazing. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. A pleasure. Unbelievable lecture. Thank you so much. Shabbat shalom. Thank much, much good news for all of Am Yisrael. Shabbat shalom. Amen. Shabbat shalom, Rav. Amen. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Was that a good class? Beautiful. Yes. Okay, that's it. Go get to work. Um, <clears throat>